Okay, I have a fairly quick and easy yet powerful trick for you. Um, the only thing is, I mean, this trick may seem a little long based on this tutorial because there is quite a bit to explain. But it is a very simple trick and very powerful, I think. Now, um, I, I call this trick uh, Stone Cold. And the reasoning behind that is because it utilizes a cold reading technique that I've devised that um, actually is designed so that you know, like other cold reading techniques, um, there tends to be some misses in cold reading to sort of, you know, work your way up based on the spec spectator's responses to find out what they're thinking of. And uh, in this, there's no, there's no uh, sacrificing any kind of misses. You're actually, every statement you say about their thought of card, even though it may seem like a miss at first in some instances, it'll actually be verified right away that you were actually dead on and uh, so it, it should seem very impressive now uh, first off what you want to do is you you're gonna need a regular deck of bicycle playing cards now it has to be bicycle for this trick based on how I've designed it but you could possibly use other decks of cards if you figure out other ways of of doing this but uh, anyways what you're gonna do is have the spectator shuffle the cards and um, while they're shuffling the cards, uh, emphasize that they can also examine the cards to you know verify that they're regular cards and there's nothing gimmicky about them. And um, what you're going to do is you're going to have you're going to ready these six what I'll call the stone cold cards. These six cards here they specifically have to be these six cards and. Um, you're going to have these readied in, in your jacket pocket or under the table or something. And while they're shuffling the deck, you're simply going to just palm the six cards like this. Now, because you're going to be using both jokers, you're going to actually have one joker in the pack. And, of course, the other joker will be in here. But there will be enough cards in this packet that there should be no suspicion of missing cards. They're not going to be able to tell because really... Technically, you're only missing four cards out of this packet because of having the jokers in in the deck. So, it's really going to be hard to notice by the spectator. So anyways, while they're shuffling the deck, you have the six cards palmed in your hand ready to go. When they hand you the deck back, you simply grab the deck with your hand like this and load up your six cards on top. Now what you're going to do is you're going to uh, bring up that you're going to have the spectator memorize a card or think of a card and rather than have them just think of a card out of the blue because you don't want you're going to explain to them you don't want them to come up with just a very common psychological card that you could easily decipher so what you're going to do is you're going to set up the cards so that they can randomly choose a card and then secretly peek at it and so that there's no way you could know what card that they've looked at and memorized and then you're going to attempt to um, pick up on whatever card they're thinking of now to do this, you're going to set out about half the shuffled deck onto the table and display it in a grid-like fashion. So you're going to actually have, you're going to display the cards like this. Now because you're going to be forcing these six stone cold cards, we'll call them, or the cold cards, let's just call them the cold cards, and we're going to set them just like so, spread out in a nice even sort of rectangle shape, just like that. And uh, and then once you you have your six in place, you can then form your grid in rows just like this. Okay, and then so you're setting up. And you can see where these forced three these three that you've originally set down are actually going to be the intersecting cards of the grid. Same with these other three; they're going to be the intersecting cards of the of the uh, five rows we have here in the grid. So that's that's the setup you want for the grid. Now, the purpose of this, this is actually a principle I was referred to by the Moody 4444, which I have to thank him for that. It's a brilliant principle. Uh, it was created by, I believe, uh, Howard Adams, the late Howard Adams. And um, originally it was just a, a smaller, uh, he utilized 13 cards to do this. And I just came up with this way of using um, 23 cards. So it just seems like a more diverse selection. 
and uh, uh, in that way, you know, it just, you know, again, it's that diversity, I think, that just adds to the effect that they've had all these cards to choose from, when in reality, the spectator is actually forced to only choose one of these six cards. And how this works is you're going to get the spectator to just name any number, I mean, literally any number. Uh, you, you know, you, you might want to suggest a number between 1 and 50 so it's not too high because you could be here forever having to count, you know, to 600 or something if they name something like that. So, uh, let's say they name 18. Now what you're going to do, before actually, before you even get them to name a number, you can have them place their finger on any of the negative spaces on the grid. They can even place their finger outside of the grid as long as it's next to one of the outside cards okay so they can place their finger literally anywhere around the grid of cards once they've decided a place let's say they name uh, 18 now all you need to know the reason why you need to hear the number is you're going to instruct the spectator based on if their number is an even number or an odd number now of course you're not going to tell the spectator this you're not going to tell them because it's an even number you got to do this or if it's an odd number you got to do it this way you're going to keep that to yourself of course but you're going to instruct the spectator differently based on if it's even or odd. So if they say 18, of course being an even number, you're going to have them count starting one with the next adjacent card that's vertically or horizontally next to their finger, never diagonally. So you just instruct the spectator to immediately count to the next card and they can count cards to their number any way they wish as long as it's horizontal or vertical and they can go backwards and forwards any way they wish. So, for example, they can count to 18 like this. They can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And you can see we've landed on one of the forced six cards, the intersecting card in the grid. Now, if it's an odd number, you simply instruct the spectator to first place their finger on any one of the adjacent cards vertically or horizontally next to their finger they can choose whichever card they want to start on so let's say they decide to place their finger here then they can start their count however way they wish again instructing them to go only only vertically or horizontally so let's say they've chosen 19 as their card as their number so now being odd of course and they they can now start anywhere they wish. They can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And there you can see we've landed again on one of the six forced cards. Now of course to the spectator they're going to assume that they've had complete free choice of any one of these cards. So it's really quite an amazing principle I think. So that's how you're going to force the six cards. Okay so I hope that makes sense. Now, once they have a card, once they've landed on their uh, forced card, you're going to ask them. Now, you, you can, of course, do this whole process of them counting the cards and whatever while your back is turned towards them, so you can't see what they're doing. I think it just adds to the effect if you don't actually watch where they place their finger. Okay, so just let them count. You know, of course, explain to them, give them an example of how to do the count, of course, and then have them do their own count while you're not looking. And then turn back around after they've peeked at their card. So let's say they've landed on this card, and they've peeked at the Queen of Spades, let's say. Once they've peeked at their card, get them while you're not looking to turn the card back over, and then to gather all the cards, and then mix them all together, so that there's no possible way, you know, that you could know what card they've peeked at. Okay, so it just really adds to that impossibility. So, once they've done that, let's say they've landed on the Queen of Spades, they've uh, gathered up all the cards, they've shuffled them together in a packet, you turn back around, and you're going to now be able to decipher what card they're thinking of. And you're going to use this cold, this cold reading method that I'm going to show you in a moment. And it's, it's going to blow them away, I think, because, again, every step of the way, every statement you say will be dead on to what card they're thinking of. Now, I'll just gather up all the cold cards, and I'll show you how we're going to do this. So, uh, just to make things a little easier, I'm going to set them up in sets. 
based on the different scenarios and I'll show you what I mean here. So let's set these aside. Okay, so we have the Jack and Queen of Spades. We have the Joker and the Ace of Spades and the Queen of Hearts and Jack of Hearts. Now, let's just say, now uh, first of all, what you're going to do as your opening statement when you're picking up on the card they're thinking of, the first thing you're going to say is that you, you're, you're getting an image in your mind of the card and you ask them to visualize their card. And you say, I see strongly a, a, figure, a figurative image in your card. Now, you'll notice every one of these cards actually has a figure image in it. The court cards, of course, all are figures. And even the Joker has a figure image here of this king. And the ace actually has a figure inside the spade. Now, when you say, first of all, you're going to say, okay, I see a figure in your in the image of your card. And then you're going to say, so I assume this card must be a court card. And then you ask them, it is a court card, is, am I not correct? And now if you're thinking of one of the court cards, obviously they're going to answer right away and say yes. And then you're going to know they're either thinking of, you know, the Jack of Hearts and Queen of Hearts or the Jack of Spades or Queen of Spades. Now, if they hesitate or they don't or they say no, it's not a court card because they're thinking of the Joker or the Ace. You can then stress on the fact that, well, I, I've, you know, you can go back to how you're saying that you see a figure image in their card, and, and it just seemed like the next logical step to, you know, mention it as a, a court card. So you're still emphasizing you're not wrong, because you're you're just you know, you're you're emphasizing the, the figure image, you see. So you elaborate on that more and you say, okay, now let's just see here for a second. As I get a clearer image here of this figure, I'm also seeing spades. Now you're going to say this because you know that they're thinking of either the Joker or the Ace in this case because they said no to the court cards, okay? So the next statement you're going to say is you see spades in their card. Now, if they're thinking of the Ace of Spades, right away they're going to answer with a yes, and you know then, because confidently they've answered yes, and that you can say that, you know, they're thinking of the Ace of Spades, because it's obvious, it's obviously a spade. Now, with the Joker, they're going to be hesitant and probably answer no, because they're not going to see in their mind spades with a Joker. I mean, obviously it has no suit with it. But in, in actuality, you'll notice there's actually spades printed on the king in the, in the image of the Joker card here. So you're not wrong when you say you see spades on their card, and you're going to verify that later in a moment. So you say, okay, I see spades in the card, and they say, no, I don't think so. And you then move on to say, okay, no, I, I definitely see six spades on your card, and you're picking up on these spades on the Joker. You know to say that now because you know they're thinking of the Joker because of the negative answer you got from them, the negative response based on the spades. So you obviously know they're thinking of the Joker. So now you can elaborate and say, I see six spades because there's three on each shoulder of the king here. And then you say, okay, and, and the figure I see is actually a king, and he's riding a bike. And this tells me that the card you're thinking of is indeed a joker. And then, of course, they're going to be blown away. And you can actually pull out the joker and verify there's the six spades you saw on the shoulders, too. And that should really freak them out. Now, that that's how the scenarios will work out for those two cards. So, obviously, you're going to have to kind of, you know, go back in the video and, and, and see what I mean. You know, or to understand this explanation, you'll probably have to go back a few times. Because this, I know it sounds a little complicated, but it really is quite simple once you get it. Now, let's rewind. Let's go back to the beginning here. First, you're going to say the opening statement, I, I see a figure image on your card. I assume this is a court card. And if they say yes, then obviously they're going to be thinking of one of these two cards or one of these two cards. So, to decipher which one, which one of the two cards they're thinking of, what you're going to say next after you've, they verify that yes, indeed, they're thinking of a court card, you then go on to say, okay, I see red, I see uh, a lot of red, the color red on your card. Now, they're going to answer without hesitation, yes, to these cards here, that, you know, because it's obviously a red card. If they hesitate because they're thinking of one of the black cards, then you know it's obviously 
going to be the Jack of Spades or the Queen of Spades that they're thinking of. Now, you're not going to be wrong by saying you saw red on the cards because you're going to elaborate more and you're going to say, yes, I see red, I see reds, but I also see yellows and blues. So that's quite characteristic of the uh, court card. So you just kind of move on and say that. You're just picking up on the reds mixed with the blues and yellows you're seeing on the court cards. And then you move on to say, because now that you know they're thinking of the Jack of Spades and Queen of Spades because of, of their negative response to your red color, you then move on to say, okay, I'm, I'm sensing uh, a, a masculine, uh, I get a masculine sense about your card. Very, it's a very masculine card. Now, if they're thinking of the Jack of Spades, they're obviously going to answer yes quite, you know, easily because it's obviously a masculine card and you'll know then to reveal it as the Jack of Spades. If they're thinking of the Queen of Spades, they're going to say no because they're obviously the Queen is not a masculine image. But then you move on to say, well, no, no, I'm sensing the... Uh, it's not only masculine, but I also sense a feminine side too. There's both a masculine and feminine feel to this card because I'm sensing that the uh, suit is a very masculine suit. And then you go on to say, I, it's indeed a spade. And then you'll be bang on with that. And that'll freak them out. And then you move on to say, and yes, and the feminine aspect, of course, is that it's a queen. And then you reveal that indeed it's the queen of spades. So in every step of the way, you're never wrong. It's both masculine and feminine, this card. Okay, so, and then, so that's how those are revealed. Now let's go back again and uh, we go back to the color part again. After you know that they're thinking of one of the court cards, you then, you first start off by saying, okay, I'm seeing the color red. Uh, does this uh, pertain to your card? And of course, they're going to say yes right away. This will tell you that they're thinking of the Queen of Hearts or Jack of Hearts in this case because of the non -hesit you know, the no hesitation to their answer. I see, uh, I see a lot of red in your card. And then and then you move on to say, for the red cards, instead of your feeling, uh, you sense that their card is a very masculine card, what you're going to say next is that their card is actually a feminine card. For the red cards, you're going to say, I sense your card is a, a, quite a feminine card. Now, if they're thinking of the Queen of Hearts, of course, there's going to be no hesitation. They're going to answer yes right away, and you can then reveal that they're thinking of the Queen of Hearts. If there's hesitation or there, you know, a negative response to the fact that it's a feminine card because they're thinking of the jack, then you know, of course, that this is their card. And then you can elaborate on the fact that you're thinking that it's a feminine card and that you're sensing, yes, I, I'm sensing it's both actually a feminine and masculine card because feminine in the sense that it's a very, uh, I get a very strong um, impression that it's a heart that feminine suit the heart, and then it'll be totally blown away, you get that correct. And then, of course, it's a masculine card in that I sense that it's a jack. This is a jack of hearts, isn't it? And then, you know, they should be totally floored that you got that correct. So, you can see every step of the way, you're getting it right. Even though it may seem like a miss at first, you're verifying that, indeed, you have it correct. So, I hope that makes sense. So, you'll see you'll probably have to go back and, and, uh, hear this out again if to, to, you know, clarify this a bit more. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So uh, anyways, that's that, I think. I think I've covered everything. So that's uh, stone cold for you. So I hope you enjoy that. And uh, please let me know if uh, you do decide to perform this trick uh, after you've, you know, practiced it, of course. And um, let me know how it goes. And uh, I'm kind of curious. So anyways, thanks for watching. Talk to you later.